kick this shit. And you, my friend, are responsible for delaying my rendezvous with Star Command. You are a toy! And beyond! You heard the sheriff. Let's go! Relax, this is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic! Bonnie made a friend in class. Everyone, I want you to meet... Forky! Trash, here I come! Shoot the left ramp! Use the spinner. Rescue Forky. Woody, how'd you find me? Shoot the inner loop to spin the wheel. Kaboom! Canada's greatest stuntman! Kaboom! Oh, we actually did that! Yes, I Canada! Hello, Woody. I knew you'd be back. I'm not leaving without Forky. Hey, guys! Long time no see! So long, partner. Hey everybody, what's going on? Straight down the middle here. It's new pinball day, but there's no need to panic. This is the perfect time to panic! <laughs> uh, straight down the middle, Zach and Greg here. We get to talk about, finally, Greg, we get to finally talk about it. I know. Oh, the brand new pinball machine from Jersey Jack Pinball released in 2022. It's Toy Story 4, Disney Pixar's mm. Toy Story 4. Now, you and I have had some behind-the-scenes action, helped with the promotional video featurette uh, yes. by Jersey Jack Pinball. Make sure to go check that out if you haven't yet. But we're here to give you our first impressions, not only just looking at pictures or videos or hearing podcasts. We've got our hands on this thing. We, we've played this thing, Greg. Yes, we're a little special. Well, <laughs> everybody's nodding their heads right now. Uh -huh. uh, first, I wanted to talk about our experience going up to Chicago, seeing that production line, Greg, running, and seeing all the vast majority of, of cabinets and, and games boxed and play fields full everywhere. Full swing, full swing. Always really stressful, of course, whenever we're doing production studio work, but nonetheless, still very special to us. So we're kind of yes. living the dream life, aren't we, buddy? Yeah. We're not only pinball enthusiasts, but we're filmmakers. <gasps> when do we get to use that moniker? I don't even know. Nah, I don't know. We got a little work to Our do. shit's clean. <laughs> yeah, it is clean. We're good. All right, so we, we, do. we went up there uh, weeks back. Uh, and we were not able to talk about anything, of course, but now we can yes. finally talk about our experience with Pat Lawler, Joe Katz, Ken Cromwell, and the rest of the crew over at Jersey Jack Pinball. Yes. Now, let's first off, big elephant in the room here. Uh, oh, that was my line. I was going to say the toy elephant in the room. The toy elephant? In the room. Because yeah. it's toy. What's it's the toy, toy elephant in the room? My toy elephant in the room is this <sighs> game. Everybody loves the the franchise of Toy Story. Everybody knows that. Everybody's yes. in love with it. Everybody grew up with it. Whether you were 40 when it came out or whether you were four when it came out, you're still mm -hmm. growing and evolving with the series, which I would uh, I would argue. Uh, there's some deep theory into uh, the events that take place in each film. Now, yes. the big elephant in the room, though, is that when you hear Toy Story, you want to see Woody, you want to see Buzz, and you do get all of that. But yes. this is Toy Story 4. This yes. isn't Toy Story 1, 2, Three. This is four. 
Which, which I think that, that both of us would be lying that when we first heard about that too, uh, you know, we've had some time to marinate on it. Uh, whereas I guess the, you know, the, the general public or vast, vast majority of general public has not had that time, mm-hmm. but you know, at least we, we had quite a bit of time to set on that, but you know, I, I think we'd both be lying if, if we said that, that, that didn't take us by surprise too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideally, that's why I said elephant. Ideally you want mm-hmm. Toy Story. You want yes. the whole franchise. I'm not I'm not downplaying four because four was greatness in and of itself. Fantastic film. But it's hard to take four without two. It's hard to take yeah. three without one. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a big collection. So they're focusing, and that was a Disney thing at the end of the yeah. day. Uh, they're focusing just on Toy Story 4. Uh, all yeah. right. So elephants out of the room now. We get to give our impressions on what we think about the game, the looks, the sounds, the feels, the touches, the licks. Yeah. When you first seen this game and walked up to it, put your first game on it, Greg, what were your thoughts? And then we'll jump into the categories. So, you know, again, you know, we, we had a little bit of time to, to think about Toy Story 4, that it's Toy Story 4. Um, and so I didn't know what to expect. You know, you, you, you can formulate a lot in your head and you don't know. So, you know, seeing that game the first time, you know, it was absolutely beautiful. Like, yeah. like patting them, killing them, like, it was. It was very beautiful. Uh, you know, it, it can it can rival Wonka in in certain aspects, uh, but it, it is a stunningly beautiful pin. Mm-hmm. So you know, you stand there for a minute, and you want to take all of that in. You know, you want to take in the characters because I got a little nervous that that maybe. You know, with it being Toy Story Four, um, you know, I didn't know if there was limitations or what they had. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know if they were going to have, you know, the main character. You know, that's th- a good point. Buzz. Are they going to have the assets? Are they even going to have the sounds from the? Was this going to be a silent, just orchestral game, yes. or what are we going to? Working with Disney has been has been proven in the past. They're very protective of their IP, as they should be. But, um, exactly. Yeah, so are I they going to allow too. Buzz and Woody to be front and center? Like, are you going to have them as the main feet? You know what I'm saying? You feel like you have to, but you just get nervous and you don't. I didn't know. want just pictures. I was like, man, I just hope they get seen film uh, clips. Yes. I was like, yes. please, please. Or at least call outs. But I'm here to tell you, they got full assets. Yes. And, not- and, and that was nice, too, because like I said, you know, you stand there. It was one of those games that took me a minute. And, you know, I'm standing there w- 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 with Joe Katz. And, you know, and, and Joe's excited about the pin. Like, his Game coder, like yep. yeah, like I, I walked in there because I got there a little before you and I walk in and, and, and Ken Cromwell starts taking me back, you know, so I can set up and everything and start really prepping. Mm-hmm. And then Ken was like, wait, wait, no, 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 get out. You're like, I'm so sorry. You, you have to leave. I'm like, what, what the hell's going on, dude? And he was like. Joe, Joe wants to present this game to you. Like Joe oh, wow. wants yeah. to see your face. Like, so, so you cannot ruin that. Like I can't, he'll kill me. So, you know, Joe was out on his break or whatever. So we went out and talked to him for a minute and Joe took me in there and you know, the enthusiasm on his face, just watching me. And then I kind of felt bad because I think he was expecting me to jump in and play it. But, you know, like I said, it really took me some time to, to want to set and, you know, take it in because and we're I there for to- work. Like it's, yeah, a, we were, if it's, it's a different whole mind construct whenever we go there. It is. So like, it, but you know, like I wanted to start looking, okay, we need to film this. We need to hit this. We need mm-hmm. to do this. We need to talk about this. But again, it took me some time because I wanted to go over the art. I wanted to look at the play field more. And then, like you said, dude, when you started seeing the assets pop up on the screen, I was like, okay, this is cool. And, and I, I said, this is no lie. I told this Joe Katz and I don't know how other people will, will feel about it, but I was like, this may be JP DeWin's like, best work that he's done oh, wow. on his stuff because it was not a cluttered back glass no. at all um or you know screen lcd screen nothing was real cluttered um everything was super clean maybe some of his cleanest work mm-hmm. uh and i loved pirates and everything yeah, but true. you know this this was good it's a it just stands out on there and it, it flows so well with the assets that they have. Nothing seems out of place mm-hmm. of, of his work and what he did. So, you know, first impressions walking up to it, it was a lot because it was a lot to take in. It's always a lot of um, color, a lot of light, a lot of things flashing. Yeah, yeah, beautiful a big colors. 27 inch screen. Then you got the big 10 inch screen. We'll talk about that. That's under the play field. So there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stimuli uh, that's going yes. around. Yeah. Yes, it really was. So it, t- it took me a minute. Whenever I first seen it, well, let's jump into art a little bit because that's kind of the first thing you see, right? Mm-hmm. I thought this game is stunning. Like, what do you do? How do you take an art package that's already established, Greg, and uh, it's just going to look like Woody and Buzz and Bo Peep? What, what's special about 
that? Mm-hmm. How do you make that special? What I think was really smart, because it is Toy Story 4, takes place at a carnival. So instead of just putting bright, colorful carnival Ferris wheels everywhere, what they did was very elegant, very smooth. They took a lot of uh, a lot of rich bokeh effects to Carnival, mm-hmm. a lot of darker kind of nighttime festival things, and they put those be- behind a lot of the art pieces, and that was really rich in nature. Pulled It really pulled in the technological advancements of a Toy Story 4 compared to a Toy Story 1, very rudimentary yes. animation. So it, it looks like it is a true world, and... Um, it's very rich. The colors are rich. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain that, but a lot of blues and purples, just deeper richness. And I think this is one of their greatest art packages for the entire company. And I, oh, I, I would agree. have never guessed that. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it, it, it's, it's sexy. Mm. It's a sexy pin. I tell you what, I don't want to downplay the CE because that thing is gorgeous. But mm-hmm. uh, the LE may be the better art package. The LE definitely rivals it, man. That like that's the thing, man. Is like you know there, there's nice differences between the two, but that LE is still just gorgeous. It like, is, it, you know. But I mean, they did that. I felt that away with with GNR when they did GNR. You know, no, not, no, we go back. Oh and my, God, I still love that LE art. You know, everybody can get pissed <laughs> off at me if they want, but that LE art package on, I love the poster. But side. like on the LE, Greg Woody is centrally featured. Yes, and that's who we want. Big. We want Buzz yeah. and Woody, and boom, yes. there he is, right center of that cabinet. And you get him on the head decal as well. Uh, yeah. Whereas the CE is more an inside look into the inside of a pinball machine, which is uh, which is uh, appropriate for that Toy Story Four yeah. license. But I like the LE. I do. Now, I do. when it comes to trim and stuff, it's kind oh, of yeah. the same as Wonka. That was a little upsetting to me. Like you're doing the the chrome red, just like you did the Wonka CE on the Toy Story 4 CE. Same with the uh, the Ellie Blue. It was kind of very similar. I would have mm-hmm. I would have liked to see him mix that up a little bit personally, but it's still beautiful. Um, yeah, it's two safe, nice colors that that work well with the the franchise. Uh, no matter which way you go, mm-hmm. uh, you know that. I'll tell you what, people. This is the stupidest thing in the world, but like. I love that shooter knob on that CE. That's one thing that oh, pulls that's me right. in. Like, the Pixar, <laughs> that yeah, the Pixar great. ball there. Yeah, it, 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 uh, it's a lot more striking than mm-hmm. what I, I felt that it would be as a shooter rod, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then if we're looking at the art on the play field, it does not disappoint. They nailed, no. they nailed the play field art. They didn't make it too busy. They didn't no. make it too cartoonish. Yes. This is a beautiful, beautiful, the color composition. You get the inlanes with that sunset area. You got the green grass, the nice little, you get a nice little contrast with the green grass under that. And then it's almost like the gamut of the the rainbow there. You go up, you get lighter blues, darker blues. That Nailed it. That is a beautiful play field. So, you know, so here's something that, that I think that they were able to achieve. Um, and, and I don't know if it was just, they were wanting to make a pretty game or if this was their mindset, but the, the pen, the pen, it's, it's what you said. It's not too cartoony when you got into that. They, they were able to straddle and do a, a, a good job on making it not a kiddie looking toy mm-hmm. or a kiddie looking, uh, game. They were able to make it look fun for kids, bright, have the characters on there. But also, like you said, with pulling in that darkness and everything, they were able to achieve a very modern, beautiful adult looking pinball machine that looks good amongst your collection or just standing alone in a corner somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like it, they, they, they found that good balance between, you know, still resonating with a kid, but also being appealing to an adult. Let's talk about design. So the art, it, it checks. It, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. It is beautiful. It's probably every, JJP's every prettiest looking art. I'm trying to think. Is that the nicest looking art pack? I think it is. It, it, I, for me, it rivals uh, GNRCE. You like the LA, of course. But mm-hmm. I think it rivals... I'm trying to think of a prettier art package from JJP. Hobbit was know, pretty I, cool. I liked Hobbit. Hobbit was cool. But like dialed but, but in, just yeah. beauty. Like, and Wonka was pretty. Wonka was pretty. Like it was pretty, and, but it and it was pretty. Yeah, th- this 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 beats it. It may be the best art package. We know Pat Lawler. This is his. I think he said when we were interviewing him, twenty four coin out machines. This is his twenty mm-hmm. fourth. Some talking about his possible retirement. 
did he disappoint in the design? Because I think the one of the common things that people are going to say is, I don't know, I look down here and I don't see anything, any huge mech besides the big 10-inch monitor. I mean, what's different here? You know, for some reason, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, complete, uh, completely Well, don't honest lie to the people, Greg. <laughs> well, but I mean, it, it's not harsh, but it could just be correlated a little wrong. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, after seeing something like Pirates and everything else, when we, when we walked in for the very first time and we saw Wonka and we shot Wonka, Wonka was a disappointment to me when I first saw it. Mm-hmm. Again, now it's my favorite JJP game. There you go. By far. But it, it because it, I didn't feel that it had toys and mechs, anything special. Yeah, you had the Gobstopper. Pat worked hard on that, and that was a very unique uh, uh, feature in mech. Mm-hmm. But it still just was underwhelming to me because of the lack of toys and stuff. Yeah, you're like, where's my castle to bash? Where's my UFO? Where's my Rudy uh, ventriloquist dummy to hit? Well, like, where's that? Well, big so thing? no, so so that's what I'm like. So here's here's where I get here's where it gets good. Oh, is like when I walked in and saw this pin for the first time. I oddly was not disappointed and okay. it, it may have a little less than what Wonka did maybe um, in a sense, but like I honestly wasn't disappointed and I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if it was just the beauty of the pen itself that kind of distracted me and took me aback. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the lack of mechs and stuff didn't bother me too bad. Then when you flip it, you don't really care that there's not that much in there because it shoots phenomenally. It does. Like it, it shoots does. so phenomenally. For, for me, whenever I walked up to it and I saw the the layout, because I I like Pat Lawler layouts for the most part. Yeah, so I was too. looking forward to that. And fortunately for me, I'm with you, Willy Wonka. I don't have enough time on this game, but Willy Wonka is my favorite JJP game. Mm-hmm. And it's not for the toys. It's not for the art. It's no. for the gameplay and the rules. So that's what's most important to me, of course, and the theme. I love the Wonka theme. Uh, I love the Toy Story theme probably even a little more. It's a it's mm-hmm. a dynamite killer license for me. Uh, so Wonka helped me because I fell in love with that game regardless of what was in it. Uh, and that's yeah. tough because you want cool shit in a pinball machine. But yes. when I walked up here, I saw all the little components but when I seen this for the first time, it kind of felt Elvira House of Horrors-ish, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. when you when you look at Elvira, you think, there's nothing really in here. Yeah. But Elvira House of Horrors probably has the most amount of mechs for a stern pinball machine. They're just kind of mm-hmm. hidden. You know, they're, yeah. they're a ball lock. There's a crypt over here. There's a, mm-hmm. a shooting vuck over here. You have a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a leapers. But you don't see it initially. That's yeah. kind of what this is. Um, yeah. I just see, well, what's the layout going to be? Whenever I'm looking at this game, game mm-hmm. design, I'm like, does it even have two ramps? Like, no, mm-hmm. it, it's actually got three. You just can't see yeah. them. That left ramp what? is mostly under the monitor. The right ramp mm-hmm. is a dialed in right orbit to a ramp, which you guys know I love. I love yeah. those. They're smooth. And your third ramp is actually coming out from under the play field because you hit the ball. It goes airborne. Do kaboom style into a back tunnel that's lit uh, like a carnival. So there's a lot of shots in here. You got two spinners. You get to rip two spinners. Th- that's the thing is you know there doesn't seem like that there's a bunch of new mechs and toys per se or or that it's jam packed. But it's it's got a lot of shots. It's actually kind of jam packed with shots. Now, yes, it is. You, yeah, it's not like a Twilight Zone wide body packed full of shots. Like you said, it's it, there's a lot of hidden shots in a sense, uh, like Twilight Zone that Pat did. Like, like it, it's kind of a sneaky ass pin, dude. It's mm-hmm. it's like you said, you don't. There's more to it than meets the eye. Well, like the ball lock, you got a drop yeah. target there. You hit that down, then you, it's a physical ball lock to the left there, and then whenever it releases it, boom, you're on a spinning wheel. Uh, so you have all of that. You've got. Yeah. The captive ball, which isn't a great place. I do like that. JJP captive balls are like the only ones I care about because they actually mean something. You get an inner repeatable loop, which is huge as well. Well, and I'll tell you, this is something, this is one of my, my, my first thoughts after, you know, throwing a game, a couple games on there and flipping around on it a little bit. Um, it's something that really excites me, and I hope it excites people when they listen to this. Uh, it's a game that left me wanting to explore it. 
Oh, like, yes. Yeah. Like, I wanted to stop, and, and not just Pat Shots, but obviously Joe's code, but but Pat Shots, like, when I was done, like, I just, I wanted to keep going back because, mm-hmm. like you said, with that ball lock, you don't really pay attention to that physical ball lock over there. You don't look at it as that. And then when you lock a ball in, you're like, oh, shit, okay, this, okay. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like that with a bunch of different things in that game. Oh, like, yeah, the I ball just, gets stopped on the left ramp, too, remember? Yes, yeah. yeah. And so I'm saying, like, I just kept finding things every time I played it. I kept finding something new and a new shot or a new little thing that was kind of hidden like that. And it doesn't seem like much, but it is because it's exciting mm-hmm. because it, it just kind of almost comes out of nowhere and it feels so good. And yeah. I, I just wanted to explore it. This is probably one of the most combo filled games that Pat's ever done. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, you got a, you got a ball diverter on a ramp. So that can go two ways. You've got, I love the shot. It feels like shadow starter mode. You rip that spinner, kicks it out. Bam. Third flipper. You're ripping a spinner. Yep. That's phenomenal. Yep. It, it, that and that feels little really flipper, good. that that's a great little repeatable shot. I was for it worried to be a, about that little flipper. Yeah. But that little flipper is so repetitive. Mm-hmm. Like you can just keep hitting that, that orbit all day long. I like was it, worried. I was like, no, yeah. I don't like little flippers. Yeah, but it feels like a full. It feels like a big flipper. It's a little flipper that feels like a big flipper. Uh, someone knows from experience what that feels like. <laughs> Chelsea, uh, oh. the, another thing that I really like, another shot that I love on this game is that shot that goes through the pops. It's like a warp shot through the pops. Yeah. It's tight, but it's there. It tight. I really like yep. that. And for some reason, there is there's no reason for me to like this particular mech. But I fell in love with it. There's a saucer in the pop area for Buzz Lightyear, Greg. Mm -hmm. You know which one I'm talking about. And I'm like, why do I like that ball going in there? I have no clue. You said it repetitively. I did. When you were flipping out, you're like, I don't know why I like that so much. It's so satisfying. I don't know why I like it. Yeah. Now, the thing. So, yeah, the gameplay, y'all, for whatever you want to think about Toy Story being the four, for whatever you guys want to think about the theme, whatever you guys want to think about the max, all of that aside, I'm telling you right now, this game is phenomenal to shoot. It is a it is. ton of fun to shoot. And I'll tell you the thing that took me by the most surprise. And it actually, you know, it, it's kind of an odd, odd thing with it. But it, and it's probably, obviously, the central toy or mech with, with Duke Kaboom. <laughs> and, like, I didn't know when that I was going to go into that mode. I didn't know when it was going to pop mm-hmm. up. Um, but... Like when that ramp popped up, I wasn't expecting it, and I hit it by accident. Like oh, I hit really? it off the fly, and it fl- it was so smooth. I was like, "Oh my god, what did I just I didn't even know that happened." They're like, "There's no and, ramp, but what? It, how does yeah, it and, go yeah, get and on Kenan the wire for were laughing. Yeah. So then it pops back up again, and I try to hit it, and it's harder that time. Like you know, it's not an easy shot. But the thing that yeah. took me by surprise is it's not clunkety. It's not <laughs> clanky. How is it not the, though? It it how it's is it like not? A, I have no idea because it, you don't even know that the ball was in the air and then had to land. It feels like one continuous ramp. It, it feels like another level. Yes, it does. It, it's a, a jump ramp to that, but it feels like one seamless ramp. Mm-hmm. You, it, it's so smooth of a shot. There's no bounce. There's no rickety. There's just yeah. there's just nothing. It doesn't hit up there real weird. It's fantastic. And I, I've got to add this. Whenever I first looked down on it and I knew that that ramp was there and just seeing that big old plastic platform, because honestly, not the most visually appealing. Uh, I'm going to, it's not, Well, you got, it's like a sneeze guard Mm -hmm. up there. There's going to be mods for that. I can guarantee that. Mm -hmm. But when I seen that, I was like, well, shit, you can't really miss this ramp though. So how fun is, how fun is that? Yes. But then I missed it four times in a row. Yes. And the reason I missed it people was because there are Benson posts to the left and right of it. And these things are key to that design. They pop up and they will block your shot just as those freaking dummies do in the, you know, in the film. But when those come up, now you got a tight little shot there. And if you do not hit it, that thing's coming right back at you. And it's so, it's so fitting for Duke Kaboom not making his stunt ramp shots. Yeah. To not make every one. Exactly. Yeah. Then they're, they're Greg, they're individually controlled Benson shot. So during certain modes, if they just want to pop up one to mess with you, yeah. they can That was a phenomenal piece. So what it did is. you not cuz I'm I'm raving the layout and everything. What did you is there anything mech-wise or layout-wise that you did not like cuz I've got a couple things. Man. No, not really. Not off the top of my head. Like like I I liked I loved how it shot. Like mm-hmm. I I, I 
I mean, I'm trying to think of a, a mech that, you know, I'm sure there are shots in there that are uh, slightly underwhelming, but for the most part, most of the shots were, were all like, they all felt good. Yeah. Um, well, they, they felt good. My things are this. I could do without the spinning wheel. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm good with the, sp- I'm done with the spinning wheels. Can we well, take a break so, for the spinning wheels? So one thing that I like about this spinning wheel is, is, is Pat and them, you know, they went through a, a, a bunch of different surfaces and this actually has like little raised bumps on there. Now, it, now when I say raised bumps, don't, <laughs> don't take it as being something. Don't that, consult your doctor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't go to the doctor. You got bumps on your wheel. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can't like, it doesn't affect the ball travel. Like if the ball rolls over in any capacity, but th- there's like some kind of grippy things on there. Mm-hmm. So when it spins, this really affects It'll your catch ball. It, it mm-hmm, does. It does. It and I like it. that because it's not just a wheel and you get a little wiggle and then it does like this will really get a hold of that ball. So man, I don't know. I kind of reminds like me it. of no good gophers right there. I I'm just, I I'm fine with spinning wheels. I like them. Um, whirlwind, no good gophers, pirates of the, Ca- I like them, but I'm just kind of, I'm kind of done with them. I do yeah. like that. It's a game within a game. You can select. It's not just an, it doesn't just give you an award. Yeah. You can actually control and select where you're going to go. If you, uh, if you're strategic about it. Well, and that's what I kind of like, cause this kind of has that pirate esque kind of thing. Like, you know, that there is more of a purpose to it than mm-hmm. it just throwing your ball off. So, you know, I, I want more time on it and I want to be able to mess with that. And, and part of Joe's code and what, what Pat and them had in mind, like I just, I, I can't comment too much on it because I don't know how much of an impact it's going to have on your game or how fun that's sure. going to be. That that yeah. that takes uh, a lot more in depth gameplay, I feel. Sure. But no, I'm not mad at it like you. Like I, the eh. the other thing that I was like eh, on is Forky is such a dominant figure in Toy Story Four. Mm-hmm. For those of you that compare Forky to Jar Jar, but you're nuts. Forky, oh, no. Forky, Forky stole that good. show. Yeah, Forky by fun. the way, he's forever into the family. Give me Forky over like. Maybe over Rex. I, I know. <gasps> Just give me give me Forky. Forky is great. But his stand-up targets? I mean, you're spelling out his name. You get five. Uh, give me drops there, Pat. Oh, Come man. on. Give me drop targets there. I want to See, shoot everything on this play field, but I don't care about stand-up targets. Mm-hmm. I think that's a general consensus in pinball anymore. And I think that, I don't know, maybe I guess I've gotten, it's one of those things that they have worked their, their mind control powers. And I have become accustomed to standups <sighs> in so many games that that, that's why I just didn't even, didn't even, you know, you, you know, the best use of a standup target. I, I, I still call them play field fillers or design fillers. The best use of a stand-up target, which I love, is when you use it as a bank shot. You use that propulsion, that physics, like on Tron, oh, or yeah. you or know, s- your or like the snick shot on yeah. Deadpool. Yeah. Give me a drop, or give me a, a stand-up target there. Every other situation, give me drops. I want to physically see yeah. what I need to hit down. I can so definitely use that, drops. And that, and uh, I don't need four pop bumpers, Pat. Pat's in love with pop bumpers. Let's put six of them in Whirlwind. Let's put. I don't need them. Mm-hmm. But then again, I haven't played this game enough. To know if that extra pop bumper is really going to be a big deal. Yeah, I agree because it didn't. Yeah, I, I I don't know if offhand playing it that I felt the effect. Yeah, of I didn't it. notice. I, mean, I didn't notice no. any of that. What I did notice was the effing code and rules. Yeah, Pat Lawler is a king. He's a mm-hmm. pinball design god. He's mm-hmm. been doing this forever. He's created some of the most classic games ever. Mm-hmm. Joe Katz, this is his second lead design mm-hmm. for code. Wonka was fantastic. Yes. I think this might be the highlight of the entire game. Uh, I agree. So that that's one of those things, you know, again, you know, first impression walking up to the game and I'm standing there with Joe. I, I take it all in. Joe's like, you know, flip the game, play the game, play the game. Play the game, Greg. Play God, he game. was so Play pumped. the game, Greg. Play the game. And uh, He's like, so, I don't want to record. Let's just yeah. play the game. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He's like, you'll come up here and play. And I'm like, Joe, we're here to work, man. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, I flip it, uh, you know, a few times, and I'm obviously learning it, and Joe's telling me some things, and I'm, like, not listening because I'm trying to, I know. to yeah. play the game uh, a little bit. And I play the game, and I'm like, okay, this shoots really smooth. This is nice. I don't, like, any game that you walk up to, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but whatever. It flipped mm-hmm. good. So then I take a step back and Joe starts talking to me and Joe's telling me things in the game and what he coded and what he did with some combos and different things in these mm-hmm. modes. And this is how you achieve this. And I'm sitting there listening to him and I'm like, holy shit, man. I was like, 
this guy really like he might have created some special shit here. So then mm-hmm. I was like, well, uh, don't mean to cut off our conversation, Joe, but I'm going to play another game real quick <laughs> before Zach like, gets Joe, here. If you, if you could just shut up too while I play, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, but but like literally listening to him run through those rules and stuff got me excited. And then when I started, you know, because again, we were there to work, so we didn't get like we got to flip this game, but we didn't get to do. We don't a get whole to nerd lot. out like we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and we just didn't get to really encompass and feel everything. So, but I did, after Joe said some stuff to me and I sort of knew what I needed to do and he's walking me through it. At that point, I took some of the pen in and I could listen to him. So, you know, as he's walking me through some of it, I'm like, wow, okay, this is fun. This is like, a, this is, this has remnants of that nineties, uh, Bally Williams type stuff, uh, that I really like. They were going for that. Yeah. That. And, and you could feel it like he did that. And I think that that's something that some of these pins have been lacking from JJP, you know, and, and, you know, you'll hear Joe say in our video, that his number one thing was making this approachable, but difficult enough for people like you and me, mm-hmm. and also fun. That that mm-hmm. was the number one thing. And listening to him and playing it, I, I think that the guy achieved just that, it, which yeah. is phenomenal and, he's, and difficult he's to do. He's getting a feel for moments. Yeah. Like what we talk about, we, we've coined that here straight down the middle pinball yes. moments. He's getting, yeah. starting to get a feel for that because some of these, uh, no offense to Joe, but some of these uh, coders and programmers, they're a little analytical. Yes. A little science mind. They're yeah. numbers based. They're like, ooh, Super X makes yeah. me horny. Like, yeah. it, that's what they do. Uh, yeah. So I think he's getting the feel for that. I like that this is very approachable, super mm-hmm. approachable. They even said, like, the wizard mode hasn't really been done before in pinball very novel very unique some of the way they're doing the wizard modes or the modes of the multi balls but sure you can get there yes but then joe cats like a wonderful cake layers it so much where sure you can get to it but you're a moderate player zach so i want you not only to get to it but i want you to complete the seven different modes of the seven different scenes in the game yeah. the newbies they're just going to start it if they get to the wizard modes based on just starting. I want you to complete it because if you complete all these tasks, mm-hmm. here's what you get to do. And yeah. then he nerds out and talks about the high-end competitive people where he's like, and then for the advanced player, we're going to have this. Here's the weapons that you can bring into it mm-hmm. if you're able to capture it throughout the regular gameplay. Yeah. And then him talking about the wizard mode, meet me at the carousel, sounds Unbelievable. A staged yeah. ball process. A two-parter. You can take one path or the other, but if you complete one path, you'll get to fireworks, which Pat Lawler yeah. said has not been done either. A spectacle, if you will. But for that advanced player, then you got to go back. And then you got to complete the other path to get to the really big one. Oh, See, that kind of stuff gets yes. me freaking going. Again, yeah, because there's so many levels to it, and I think that that's what we like. You take something like Walking Dead, or you take some of these games that have multiple multiple avenues of how you can approach the game, and you decide of how deep you want to go or try a different path. And that's the thing is, I, I feel that you're gonna sort of get uh, it's almost like an RPG or something. Like like mm. you're, you're almost choosing your path of how you want to go and how you want to approach this game, and you're gonna have different outcomes. Joe Katz is always worried about having too much of a linear code set i know that yeah. uh, you know he's a friend i know that uh, as his he's a friend um and then like just the little stuff like he was telling me it's so approachable for people to start a scene or to get us get into a scene like gabby gabby or something. but he said but for you and for other people there's different levels mm-hmm. of that so yeah. the, one person will just see the surface level mm-hmm. but you get into it again there's stage two stage three they get progressively more difficult i like having those options, but still have an approachable thing where I can understand. And yeah. I got to say, saving Forky. Can we talk about that just for a second? <laughs> rescuing You've talked about it. You've talked about it for two weeks. Dude, rescuing Forky is, that's exactly the type of code moment I'm talking about. Yeah. It is a simple task. It's yeah. a three-shot combo. Mm-hmm. Look, he, he will confuse the hell out of you explaining it because he'll add too much to it. But yeah. here's the deal. You go to rescue Forky, Forky you qualify, it's three shots, that's it. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the thing, though. If you do not get those three shots in a row, you miss a shot, mode's over, done. Yep. Simple. Yep. That's super simple, super addictive and fun, though. Yes. And yep. you're not going to get tired of it because once you do that, Greg, and Rescue Forky, the next time you start Rescue Forky, four shots. Yeah. The next time, five shots. Ah. Oh. See, that's what, that's what gets me high because I know this game's going to shoot well, and I know this code's going to keep it in my collection for a long, long time. 
Yeah, and again, that that's what I walked away with. Like, like, what did I say when we called each other when we left there? I was like, you know, th- this kind of had that pirates effect over me, um, where I walked away and I, I literally called you. and was like, you know what, man? Like, I don't care what people say about this game. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I I just cannot wait to get my hands on it. And like, I was kind of giddy about it. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, like I again, and it comes down to just like what I said with Pat shots. Like, it's like, especially with Joe's code, like, I cannot wait to dive in and explore because there's just so much more there that, that meets yeah. the eye. And I, I don't know, man. And, and, and I don't want to sound like a, a, like this major hype guy on this show, but I know, but like, we're I excited. Just, I don't, who cares? Dude? Yeah, I'm we're so, excited, like, we're excited. I have not been this excited to explore a pin in, in, in such a long time because there's just so much going on. Yeah. Um, that, that you just, it really was a see. major tease when we got up there and only got to play it just a little bit. Oh, so I was like, oh, okay, this is the right. kind of game I want to dig into. Like, mm-hmm. and again, we'll finish out code here. You got seven different scenes, clips from the actual freaking film. Yeah. You get flip. to collect those characters too. If you yeah. do well enough, just like on really good games out there, you get to collect the character. That's not all. You're also collecting tickets on the ramps, hitting mm-hmm. ramps, kind of like the Wonka bars. And I love that yeah. on Wonka. But you're doing that so that you can play some carnival games. You're yes. not going to get bored there. 12 carnival games. Yeah. Some are more difficult than others. Some take more tickets than others. 12 different. That's like 12 more modes. Yeah. Multiple multi balls here with different stages, add balls. I want to see what the wizard mode is. And then oh, fire- I do too. And then fireworks. That, that was one thing they did not go in depth about. They kept talking about it and they talked about it in that video. And then it left me going, well, we, a, we what, know with me the carousel, it's not because Pat was like, you know, a lot of these wizards modes, they'll mm-hmm. just throw you all six or eight balls and just go to go to town frenzy. Yeah. But it's freaking boring. I agree. He said, mm-hmm. it's you get one ball, you get yeah. one ball, you got to do enough correct shots to get to that next path. That's it. Oh, I'm curious. Oh, oh. I, I know. I know. I know. All right, speaking I, I kind of like cold chill. I know. Play. Speaking of assets, we know they got all the video assets. How much they'll use of it, I don't know. We've seen a lot of it already. Mm-hmm. Uh, but audio is a big deal here. Yeah. And they knew that they had to nail it for Pixar and Disney. And they did. They got mm-hmm. the call outs from the film, which, mm-hmm. I mean, look at Guardians. That doesn't happen. Look at Jurassic Park. That doesn't always happen. Yeah. So they got all that. They got freaking Tim Allen to do custom call outs. Yeah. T- the huge. Tim Allen. That's big. Buzz Lightyear. Santa Claus. Yeah. Like now, Annie Potts Tim, is no... Uh, like Annie that's Potts! Pretty, pretty freaking difficult, Bo too. Peep. Custom yeah. callouts, and you get CE custom callouts, too. Yeah. Uh, she was on Ghostbusters. Annie Potts. And then yeah. you get Tom Hanks' brother, Jim Hanks, that does all of his official yeah. voice work kind of stuff and video games and everything. You get him, too. That's three of them. They yeah. only needed one. They could have yeah. saved money. But it's awesome yeah. that they gave us three. All right, so uh, I think we've... We fully hyped this game, but we're hyping it after we actually have experience of it. I'll yeah, that's that. the difference. <laughs> um, and, and I would maybe uh, have a different sentiment and a different thought process going into it if we were sitting here filming today and I hadn't got to play it. But sure. but playing it, uh, it really... It, it, it checks out people. <laughs> yes, yeah. It, it's, it's a checks whole a different way. thing. Um, and that happens with a lot of pins, but I, I feel that that I, the initial shock of the release of this one, I guess, mm-hmm. um, m- makes the enjoyment and playability of it uh, so much more and, um, resounding. Well, and there's so much stuff in here that we don't even have time to cover. I mean, we didn't even talk about Tiki Multi Bowl, uh, where it's on the 10 inch display. We haven't talked about the 10 inch display, but mm-hmm. there's so much that we haven't. E- oh my gosh, there's that. We haven't talked about a lot of it, but that's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. I'm just saying right now, regardless of what anyone says, if mm-hmm. you liked Willy Wonka, you're yeah. going to freaking love this. If you like Pat oh. Lawler games, you're going to freaking love this. If you like the 90, 90s Bally Williams stuff, you're yeah. going to freaking love this game. Agreed. Agreed. I, I think wait. this might shoot better than Wonka. <sighs> I don't have enough time on it, but damn, my Wonka shoots good. I know it does. And all but- the, dude, the fuck are we didn't even talk about the hot rails. Oh my gosh, the hot rails. Oh, it adds so much load. And the to it topper too. for the CE. Oh. oh yeah, Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom is awesome in this. Man. How great is Duke Kaboom? I'm it going is. for the CE, but yeah. I think the LE might be where it's at here. I, I, I will for the probably. price changes now. I mean, that's a that's a big big jump now that uh, JJP made from the last collector's mm-hmm. edition uh, in GNR to this one. Whereas you just seen a thousand dollar, I think, increase from for the LE, but this may be my first, uh, my first JJP. Dude, we didn't even talk about them fl- fixing like the flipper mushy system. 
And they even bump up the uh, the power to that flipper whenever you hit Duke Kaboom. Yeah, so that was one of the coolest yeah. things I thought Pat said. That that um, I, I mean, maybe there just wasn't need for it in, in a lot of other games or something. I I don't know, and this is a very specific mech for it. But but yeah, I really like that. Like Pat said, it senses and it knows, like you know, when that when they're going to throw that jump ramp up. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's by rollover or whatever in that that in lane. But he was like, you know, it automatically cranks that flipper power up. Mm-hmm. And then you can adjust that flipper power on the fly, on, yeah. on the fly if you need to, like you know, do, just because of your home power, you know, supplier. If you're being sure. bogged down in an arcade or at a show or something, uh, you can bump that up on on demand. But you know, generally that when it rolls over and that ramp comes up and it knows that you're going to attempt to do that shot, it increases that flipper power so that you're not underpowered at all and you make that yeah. shot smoothly. Like that's one of the things. That's, well, just f- fixing the flippers. Like people say they get sluggish yeah. after a couple hours. He yeah, said no. that your flipper power will be the mm-hmm. same at two hours as it is after two minutes of playing. Yeah. He said yeah. they've they've cleaned that up. So that's that's pretty phenomenal as well. Yes. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I like that up. So there's small like little things that Pat did, you know, and, and I just I loved watching the guy and the excitement on just something like that that he did because you know, I don't I don't know. I, yeah, and uh, I wanted to say special shout out to Pat Lawler. Um, you know, I've never, we, we were able to work with him on a professional level, not to the depths that a lot of people have over the years mm-hmm. from Bally Williams to Stern to JJP. Uh, but regard, I, if this is his swan song, if this is him leaving JJP, um, I, I've got to say, man, not only has he designed just phenomenal and exceptional, some of my favorite pinball machines, but he got that factory up and running in Chicago. Let's yeah. not forget that. Yeah. Um, he's done production for a long time. He knows a little, and I'm just thinking about the Lexan inlet right by the scoop. Mm-hmm. So you don't need a, a cliffy protect like, Oh yeah. He's done so much more. He's, he's trained different designers and coders. He's done so much more. If this is it for him, what a hell of a legacy, Greg. So, you know, our first experience with Pat was when we did Wonka. Um, and it was kind of uh, off the cuff, like you know, kind of thing. I think he's like, "What take, are you all doing? I don't want to yeah. do it." Like, I think we took crazy. him aback. Yeah, like, "Hey, we're going to interview you, Pat." And I don't think he really wanted to. We have that effect on people, yeah. Greg. So, so we did it this time, you know, and, and you know, Pat was obviously gracious enough to do it and sat down for us and take his time. Um, but you know, it was one of those things that, like, you know, Pat wants, you know, get Pat in first and Pat can, you know, get out and go about his business. Set the tone. And, yeah. And do it, you know, and, and Pat can go cause he's a busy guy. Like yeah. he can go on and do his other stuff. Uh, what, what, what I really loved was that Pat was as giddy as Joe Katz or anybody else oh my gosh. Uh, to stand yeah. there with a smile on his face and go, Hey, Hey, look at that scoop. Like you said, that Lexi and he was like, look at that scoop. Yeah. Look, get in there close. Literally, it was like that, and just a smile. Face. And he would do one of those, like um, where he would he would point at something, and he would almost do a mic drop. He'd be like, "Look at that," <laughs> and kind of bounce back, throw his hands on his hips, and just like nod at it. And uh... I was like, I was like, dude, like that, like just listen to him go over everything. And that's why we knew so much about that game. It's like, like yeah. to me, Pat was not selling us on that game, and Pat wasn't like, "Look at this feature." Pat was proud. He just wanted to share it, yeah. He just wanted to share what he did, and the enthusiasm was not a, this is what we put in the game. It was a, this is what I put in the game. You like it? <laughs> well, and it's a, you know that, that a game's going to be good when the creators yeah. put themselves on the back burner. They're like, I, I just don't care about being in front of video. Like, can yeah. we just play? The, I want to play this game. I want to show this off. I want to show you how excited and proud we are of this yeah. product. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, again, for whatever it's worth, hell, I'm wearing a JP shirt for for God's sake. Um, take it for what it's worth, but we we always try to be real with you. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell you stuff that I don't like that I don't think mm-hmm. was a good decision uh, on their part, and I'm no expert, so yeah, I, I'm probably ignorant and wrong. But this game's badass. It's yeah. it's really good, especially if you like the theme and stuff. It, it's it's unbelievable. I'm guessing this is going to be a a, a bolted one in my collection, just knowing what I like in pinball and in theming. Um, yeah. Greg, what, um, hopefully we'll do an unboxing here soon. Maybe a review of toy story four here very soon. Uh, yes. We get a lot of stuff coming up, don't we? Yes. And where can people, if they want to buy one of these Jersey Jack pinball, um, toy story fours, where can they buy it from? You roll over. Oh, no, don't. <laughs> Sorry. I was holding up my Jersey Jack shirt. <laughs> no, don't buy it there. <laughs> you dumb bastard. That's right. No. Uh, uh, flip in out the letter in 
pinball.com Hell yeah. for all of your JJP orders. Hop Boom. on over and get yourself a Toy Story for today. Dang, that was really good there, Jerry Thompson. Uh, you know. Yeah, actually, you you guys can purchase one right now. They've they've had a lot in the box at reveal time, uh, but yeah. it's going to take them a couple of years to make all of the orders coming in. But yeah, uh, it, yeah it's a phenomenal game. More information can be found on the website jerseyjackpinball.com, or you can contact us eight one two four five seven nine seven one one or me Zach C A C H at flip the letter in out pinball.com or just pull the trigger, buy one. You'll like oh, it. Oh yeah, good you one. will like it, and it's going to be pretty. The whole yep. family's going to flock to this damn thing. Yes. We didn't even talk it is about a family it. pin. It God, we didn't talk about the pin. kids. Kids are going to take this pin yes. over. Yeah. Yeah. Look, good luck playing your new game if you got a family. Mm, absolutely. All right. That right there is Greg. He's as sexy as ever. Uh, it's early. It's a. L- it's going to be a long day, Greg. You ready, buddy? I'm ready for it. I'm Zach. Straight down the middle. See you guys later. You hit it off with the bumper knife. Straight down the middle. Yeah. The middle yeah. You had a fling with a slingshot, you're rolling out the out and all yeah. Like the best thing, like I'm over here pissing off my wife. I'm got ferns behind me and shit. I've been up for eight hours getting all pissed off at pinball. I'm forky. You gotta find in me. Gotta find in me. With a body. My bad. <laughs> Put a fork in it, they say. Who is that? A cat trying oh. to eat my fucking computer cord. Oh, I thought it was one of your children. No, stupid. <laughs> God damn.